scientists discover a new way to produce food with photosynthesis. For millions of years, photosynthesis has developed in plants to convert water, carbon dioxide, and solar energy into plant biomass and the food that we consume. However, this method is incredibly inefficient, as just 1% of the energy from sunlight reaches the plant. Artificial photosynthesis has been developed by scientists from the universities of Delaware and California's Riverside to completely replace the need for biological photosynthesis and enable food production without sunlight. Theory of Science welcomes you to another video. Today, we'll be discussing the latest discovery on artificial photosynthesis that does not require sunlight. Matt Damon discovered a new way to grow plants on Mars in the 2015 blockbuster. The Martian survived on potatoes in the fictional storyline, and scientists have found a new method of artificial photosynthesis that may bring it closer to reality. Since scientists have developed an artificial technique that more effectively produces food without the need for sunlight, biological photosynthesis may soon become outdated. In the research, carbon dioxide, energy, and water are transformed into acetate, the form of vinegar's primary ingredient, using a two-step electrocatalytic process. Then, in the dark, food-producing organisms absorb actate to grow, and water are transformed into acetate. Then, in the dark, food-producing organisms absorb acetate to grow. When combined with solar panels to generate electricity to power the electroanalysis, this hybrid organic-inorganic system could increase the conversion efficiency of sunlight into food by up to 18 times for some foods. Furthermore, dry agriculture in the form of carbohydrates, liquid fuels, chemical feedstock, and polymers for fiber production, as well as hydrogen production through electrochemical or water disassociation into hydrogen and oxygen by simulating photosynthesis, are critical components of a cumulative artificial photosynthesis framework. According to the researchers, this is the first time an artificial photosynthesis system has been combined with an attempt to grow common food-producing organisms. In an artificial photosynthesis system, an enzyme bed reactor is used to regulate carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. This can also be accomplished by any other source that removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. This enzyme reactor is powered by hydrogen energy and biochemical transducers. Hydrogen energy is the production of energy from hydrogen or hydrogen-containing molecules, which is then distributed with high energy efficiency for all practical purposes. A device called an electrolyzer is used to transform raw materials like carbon dioxide into valuable chemicals and goods. The technology uses a two-step electrocatalytic process. The highest levels of acetate ever produced in an electrolyzer was attained by decreasing the amount of salt used. The output of the electrolyzer was intended to promote the growth of organisms that can produce food. The resulting acetate mixture was then supplied to dark-growing plants as food. Experiments show that green algae, yeast, and mushroom-producing fungi can grow in the dark directly on the acetate-rich electrolyzer output. This technology requires roughly one-fourth as much energy as photosynthesis to produce algae. When corn sugar is used instead of traditional cultivation methods, yeast production is approximately 18 times more energy efficient. The procedure was surprisingly effective when compared to photosynthesis. Green algae could produce biomass using artificial photosynthesis about four times more effectively than crops can with biological photosynthesis. After successfully growing algae devoid of photosynthesis, the researchers moved on to a trickier inquiry. Could they also grow crop plants? Crops like cowpea, lettuce, tobacco, tomato, rice, canola, and green pea were all able to use carbon from acetate when grown in darkness. Out of all the food crops tested, lettuce produced the best results from artificial photosynthesis. There's even a possibility that acetate could improve crop yields, though more research is required. According to Elizabeth Han, a doctoral candidate in the university's Chingerson lab and co-lead author of the study, they were able to grow food-producing organisms without any contributions from biological photosynthesis. When compared to biological photosynthesis, this technology is a more efficient way of converting solar energy into food. Some scientists think that the solution lies in genetically modifying crops to photosynthesize more effectively. Their method is a variant of artificial photosynthesis, a term that has long been used to describe various methods of converting sunlight, water, and CO2 into liquid fuels and chemicals like formate, methanol, and hydrogen. The advancement could help lead to new ways to grow food on Earth. 
as well as possibly on Mars. The scientists also looked into where the acetate went inside the plant. The findings revealed that all of the plants tested could incorporate acetate and were relatively willing to digest and use the carbon molecules. In some plants, acetate was found in amino acids, while in others, it was found in sugars that the planet used for energy. This food production method was a Phase 1 winner in NASA's Deep Space Food Challenge. The Deep Space Food Challenge is a global competition in which, in which teams compete for cash prizes for developing novel and game-changing food technologies that require few inputs while producing safe, nutritious, and palatable food for long-duration space missions. The researchers intend to keep improving the electrolyzer system in, in order to produce a more effective acetate mixture. They also want to look into ways to bioengineer plants that can only grow on acetate. They also want to look into ways to bioengineer plants that can only grow on acetate. Check out our channel for more interesting content like this.